he wasn't on the group chat because mm -hmm. everybody on that stand is, yeah, no, crack tail like 45 pieces. We found it in the snow. Oh my gosh, this is so crazy. Lock so her up, damage. lock her up. So that man damage. said, yeah, I was there. And was there any, no, it was a small little crack thing, but there, it wasn't 45 pieces mm -hmm. missing. I said, wait, why did the Commonwealth call him? I don't understand. They messed up. Now, if you're not ready, then go ahead and tell me you're not ready. I object to you getting with it. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. In other words, the car didn't hit him, and he wasn't hit by the car. I'm not a lawyer, but... Are y'all keeping up? debrief hello and welcome to i'm not a lawyer but the debrief my name is melanie aka i'm not a lawyer but and i'm joined by my co-host goose how y'all doing uh we have a ton to cover uh we are not lawyers attorneys practicing we've never taken the bar never gone to law school uh but we follow cases lawsuits all the things and then bring you uh you know, the latest on them and sometimes insert our opinions in them as well. So that is what we are going to be doing today. There is a ton. I feel like the world is on fire when it comes to like true crime world, right? YSL is on fire. Karen Reed is on fire. That whole trial is a, is a fire. Uh, so we are going to talk about the things that have happened over the last week in both of those cases. That is what this um, episode will be dedicated to. That said, What's your boy name on YSL? The one that's been on the stand? Yeah. Kenneth Copeland? Kenneth Copeland and Proctor are it's, head and head. They, they racing down the track. It's, been it's about crazy. to be a tie. Both 100%. of them boys are acting a fool. Uh, so the first part of this podcast, uh, we have the segment called Mel's Mini Bar, where I usually go over something legal and explain it, give you... Uh, what I hope is accurate information and maybe a little negative uh, information that you didn't know before. So, and then we have the sidebar where we talk about something that's not like the main part of the episode. But we are going to combine the mini bar and the sidebar because it's going to be YSL. A lot of happened in YSL and there's a few things I want to go over and explain. Um, that'll go in conjunction with the sidebar, basically detailing what happened last week. So, let me give a little bit of a setup. Uh, obviously, I've talked about many times why I sell the RICO case in Fulton County that is against Young Thug and a bunch of other co-defendants. And they are, well, this last week, the state's like key witness, okay? Mm -hmm. He is said to be the key witness for this entire case. His name is Kenneth Copeland, a.k.a. I say Woody, but somebody in the comments said is something else i'm gonna say woody it's woody um yeah somebody in the comments said something else but no. it's fine so kenneth copeland um was a member of ysl and he has about six interviews that he's done with police in which he allegedly gave information to them that really helped build this entire case okay mm -hmm. at the heart of this case is um, the uh, the murder of Donovan Thomas. There's two murders in this case. And Donovan Thomas' murder is um, a big part of it. And Kenneth Copeland allegedly gave some information to police about that and kind of helped them set it up. That said, okay, Kenneth Copeland, being that he was a key witness, was given immunity to testify, okay? So... He gets on the stand on Friday. He's called. It's the first day of testimony for him. Mm -hmm. The state calls him to the stand. And it doesn't take long for him to plead the fifth. So we're going to play the clip of when that happened. He pleads the fifth even though he has immunity? Yeah, we're going to play it. Hold on. Wait, are you going to let me ask you some questions? Okay. How old are you? Grown. Okay, what does grown mean? I'm an adult. Okay. And when you said you're an adult, what number in years are you? I plead the fifth. Ladies and gentlemen, can I get you to step outside to your headquarters of jury liberation, please? From All right. 
Uh, Mr. Copeland, given the fact that you have invoked your Fifth Amendment privilege, but the state has already given you immunity under 24-5-507, this court holds you in willful contempt, and uh, we'll see you on Monday. And we'll see, we'll see if we uh, can get some more testimony at that point in time. Take him into custody. You hear them? The There's only one way you could have gotten it. Okay. So, <laughs> as you I'm saw, I'm, he didn't, he was not cooperating. I'm an adult. So, he is on the stand. He is asked two questions um, and ends up uh, pleading the fifth and gets arrested. Now, he gets held for contempt. A lot of people had the question you had, which was pleading the fifth when you have immunity. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people had the question of how can you have the right to plead the fifth? And so how can he be held in contempt? How can he uh, be arrested for that? And I don't know if you heard, but the judge cited 24-5-507. And we're going to put that on the screen because there's a part of it that answers that question. Okay, the highlighted part, excuse my highlight. Um, but you see at the top, right, 24-5-507, immunity from, prose from prosecution for persons ordered to testify or produce evidence in criminal prosecutions contempt. And so, highlighted part, any order entered under this code section shall be entered of record in the minutes of the court so as to afford a permanent record, blah, blah, blah. The B section says, if a person refuses to testify after being granted immunity from prosecution and after being ordered to testify as set forth herein, such person may be adjudged or held in contempt and committed to the county jail until such time as such person purges himself or herself of contempt by testifying as ordered without regard to the expiration of the grand jury, blah, blah, blah. So what, he, what the judge cited was uh, this code. And as you see, it says that if you are granted immunity and still choose not to testify, you can be held in contempt until you purge yourself or until you testify. The only way to fix the uh, contempt is, oops, is to testify. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is what happened. And the reason is immunity overrides the fifth because the point of the fifth amendment is you have essentially right. Think about the Miranda rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. So the point of pleading the fifth is so that something is not used against you for prosecution later. When you are then given immunity, that stops the prosecution later. And therefore, you got to talk. Does that make sense? Yeah. That said, there are more than one kind of immunity. And I'm going to play this clip because then we're going to talk about the kinds of immunity and the immunity that Kenneth Copeland was given. Here's the clip. Hold on. Use immunity in this case so that anything that me. Um, the state did offer Mr. Copeland use immunity in this case so that anything that he testifies to um, in this particular proceeding will not ever be used against him. So you heard her say. He was granted use immunity. Okay. Mm. Use immunity is immunity that you will not be prosecuted for what you say on this stand. However, there's two key things to know about use immunity. It does not absolve you from being prosecuted if independent evidence is produced. So let's say you're on the stand mm -hmm. and you are you were involved in a robbery, okay? And in order to get another person, the state has given you immunity and because they want you to testify about the person who maybe planned the robbery, the big person in the robbery, okay? Mm -hmm. Anything you say, they are not going to prosecute you. But if maybe there's a ring camera somewhere that nobody knew about and all of a sudden is produced and shows uh, another aspect of this robbery, I don't know. That would be independent evidence. That is something derived outside of what you've said. And so if they are able to secure independent evidence outside of what you say, mm -hmm. you can then be prosecuted. Does that make sense? It does. And it sounds like a trap. Well, and I should read it. Uh, does not 
prevent, okay, use immunity does not pre, no, let me start over. Use Im immunity prevents the prosecution from directly using the witness's testimony against them, but does not prevent the government from using other evidence obtained from independent sources. It makes sense. Okay. The it's just, it's, it seems to be, uh, I wonder if they broke that down to him or to the clients before. Well, when he got on the stand, when he was like, they saying stuff they don't under, he his hesitation mm -hmm. seemed to me to, because everybody was like, he has immunity. Does he not understand immunity? But it seemed to me that he actually does understand immunity and he may fear still being able to be prosecuted mm. because of this, this part of it. Yeah. The other thing about use immunity that you have to know is that the state, that prosecutor, that DA cannot charge you, but it doesn't prevent you from being charged federally or in another county, another state. It is specific mm -hmm. to that city or that DA, right? Mm -hmm. That uh, county. Okay. So those are the two loopholes. There, the other kind of immunity is transactional or complete immunity. Absolute, I believe, is another term for it, and I'm not a lawyer. But um, the other side is, like I said, transactional. And that is more full immunity. Okay. That is a, 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 you are covered in, in a full way versus use immunity. So. Let me hear what that one say before I say I won't. I won't that oh, anymore. that's all I was going to say about it. Oh, yeah. They cannot be prosecuted for any offense connected to the subject of the testimony. Okay. It it does. The, uh, I don't know if it prevents from federal prosecution. I don't know that, though. I'm not a lawyer. So if you are one way in about um, complete immunity, if it per if it protects you from federal versus uh, state. So I wonder if uh, I know who committed the crime. Mm -hmm. And you grant me immunity, uh huh. Right, complete okay. immunity. Uh huh. Come to find out, I am the one who committed the crime, and I confess to that. And do I still have immunity? I you got to run it back. I didn't hear what you said. You grant me immunity. You're given immunity, okay? All right, because you're trying to figure out who did the crime. You give us all the information that you know for immunity. Okay. But I am the one who committed the crime. Okay. I tell on myself. Uh -huh. But you've granted me immunity for my information. You tell on yourself? Yes. But I'm you granted me Im immunity okay. for my information. You didn't, uh, Copeland, okay. for example, Yeah. whatever crime there is, mm -hmm. they're trying to figure out who did these murders. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Copeland's like, I want immunity. They're like, yeah, you have immunity. What's the information you have? I was involved in this murder here, but he also was too, right? Yeah. And is Copeland able to get off because he has well, that would be immunity? That would be immune. That's the point of immunity. You're you're involved, but mm -hmm. your testimony is is. Uh, helping us get someone else, and so that is why you get the immunity. It 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 is preventing prosecution of you for your involvement in the crime. Okay, I'm I'm just clarifying that I am the one who did. You're involved the... in the crime. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. That and again, that's the it goes back to anything you say can and will be get used against you in the court of law. Outside of that immunity, what you would say would have you prosecuted. Mm -hmm. The point of immunity is you're not going to be prosecuted. Please tell us. Okay. Please say what you and please get on that witness stand. Um, Ten folk. So anyway, though that is the first part that I wanted to go through. Now, okay, what happens after that continues to be chaos in the YSL trial. So on Friday, when all of this happens, Copeland is arrested on the stand. His attorney comes in and raises hell. Right. His attorney, the the judge, at the end of that clip, the judge says, we'll see you on Monday because, again, the point of the kind of contempt that Kenneth Copeland had was such that until you testify, you will be held in jail. So the judge says on Monday, you'll come back. We'll ask you if you plan to testify or plead the fifth. If you plead the fifth, you'll go back to jail. If you testify, you are now purged of the contempt, right? Mm -hmm. Copeland's attorney says, 
his name is Melnick. He says, I got some tickets, some non-refundable tickets. So I can't be here on Monday. I know he's my client, but I, I got tickets. I'm on vacation. And so the judge says, well, you should, somebody should be here. And so what happens on Monday is that a stand-in attorney comes to the court to represent Kenneth Copeland. Court is delayed. Nobody knows why. And then at lunch, Brian Steele says that he learned that the reason court was late this morning is because y'all had an ex parte meeting, meaning a, a, a meeting with one party, the judge and one party, either the uh, state or the defendant. So in this case, it was the judge and the state. Uh, and the witness, Kenneth Copeland, was involved in that and his stand-in attorney was involved in that. And Brian Steele has heard about what happened in this meeting. Uh, you're not supposed to have a meeting with the witness. So it becomes a whole thing. The judge asks Ken, uh, Brian Steele, who told you about this meeting? Brian Steele refuses to answer who told him about the meeting. The judge says, if you don't tell me, I'm going to put you in, you in contempt. Now you got to go to jail. And so let me play that clip. So I'm, I'm going to ask you again, if you don't tell me how you got the information, I'm going to hold you in contempt. I understand. I don't want to be held in contempt. And I don't want to hold you in contempt, but you, but, but, it, but it's, but this is so sacrosanct to have a conversation in my chambers parroted to you and others, it is that serious. Yeah, and that's why I raise it. It is that serious that we should have been there and it shouldn't have happened. Sir, that's a, that's a, whole, that's a whole separate issue. And this, that, that's, that, why, that that's why ex parte conversations are recorded. Um, this is a matter. Um, so... Brian Steele does not want to obviously give up the source as to how he found out about this ex parte meeting and what was said in that ex parte meeting. Uh, and so the judge ends up saying, OK, we're holding you in contempt. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Basically, chaos ensues. OK, after this, a calvary of attorneys shows up. It's like 20 to 25 attorneys show up to this courtroom, all in defense of uh, Brian Steele and Ashley Merchant is an attorney who also shows up. Ashley Merchant is the attorney who, if you are aware of the Trump RICO case that is in Georgia, Ashley Merchant filed the motion. She represents one of the defendants in that case, and she filed the motion to have Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade, who is a special prosecutor, recused from the Trump RICO case. Okay, so she is pretty known. Um, so she comes up to the stand and they have this back and forth, they being Ashley Merchant and the judge, regarding the kind of contempt that Brian Steele is being held for, okay? Mm -hmm. And the point is, the judge was trying to say he was being held in civil contempt as well as criminal contempt. He was trying to pull from both. Remember what I said about Kenneth Copeland? Mm -hmm. He had contempt such that until he tells, until he testifies, he can be held, okay? Yeah. That is civil contempt. So the judge was telling Brian Steele, until you tell me who told you what your source is, you will be held until hmm. Ashley Merchant was like, hey, judge, you're also saying that he has criminal contempt. And with criminal contempt, there is no held until you tell. Mm -hmm. The point of criminal contempt is that you've done something bad and now you are punished. Think of a crime, right? It's like here is your punishment, which means you get sentenced. Mm -hmm. So the uh, so Ashley Merchant was saying, judge, you have to sentence him. You don't get to just hold him until he tells you. You have to just put a mm -hmm. sentence on the crime, right? The thing that you are saying he did. The max is 20 days in Georgia for that kind of contempt. Man. So she was like, you have to, you get to take your pick. And when you do that, he gets a bond. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or you can, uh, yeah, he can get a bond and he can appeal. And the judge is like, no, you're wrong. He don't get no bond and he don't get no appeal. And she's like, judge, yes, he does. So it becomes this whole thing. The judge is wrong. Brian Steele's wife, who's also a very accomplished attorney, files the paperwork <laughs> immediately, immediately, and uh, he gets bond, uh -huh. um, and the appeal will be taken up. Because the judge was wrong, he does get both. So, all of that said, the other thing, I know I told you I was a lot, but the other thing that we need to get 
two throughout this fiasco, mm -hmm. attorney love basically is trying to explain why the ex parte meeting could happen. Okay. Because Brian Steele and the defenses are saying you had this meeting without us. Mm -hmm. You didn't tell us you were having the meeting. What I've heard about the meeting is crazy. You had it with a witness. All this is all crazy. Mm -hmm. And attorney love is saying we can have a meeting. You are wrong. So I'm going to play the clip of her saying that. And then we, we need to talk about what may be the basis for what she's saying. May. I'm not a lawyer, though. The defendants did not have a right to be a part of, um, as this was a matter regarding a civil contempt um, that the court imposed upon a person for not obeying the court's uh, directive. Uh, people on the Patreon are saying a couple things. Yes, I, and let me just say them because I am aware of them. Uh, emphasizing that they had a, a meeting, this ex parte meeting with a sworn witness. Sworn witness meaning he was on the stand testifying. He has been sworn in to now testify. That is what they were emphasizing was a problem. Um, but I have things to say. The other thing is, yes, Ashley Merchant is the president of the Georgia Association of Criminal Defense Lawyers, and that was the Calvary, essentially, that showed up. Um, but what I want to say is but they just called them out of the other courtrooms or they just they, hanging I think everybody is watching this trial anyway. I think everybody is well aware of what's going on in this case. Um so one of the things that the judge said is when he was implying who told Brian Steele what the source is, mm -hmm. he was saying that it seems to have come from uh, he implied um that it came from Kenneth Copeland's attorney, mm -hmm. the stand-in. And he said, if she did that, it would be a violation of attorney client privilege, mm -hmm. which is weird in and of itself because he doesn't know if that was the case. He doesn't know if Kenneth Copeland told his attorney that she could say she could tell the defense. Ah. He doesn't know that. So using that as a basis is weird. Number one. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, there it's his understanding or his trying to say that this was essentially a secret meeting is also off right like it's it's that's not accurate that's why it was recorded and there's going to be a transcript is because it's not secret hmm. the other thing though is holding brian still in contempt for not telling revealing his source is also very off right like his, his whole grounds are off okay but the other thing, go ahead. Is the judge just mad because somebody basically um, is a whistleblower from it, that meeting? Basically, just well, went he and was told saying what was happening. He was meeting. saying the fact that somebody would take something that happened in my chambers mm -hmm. and then parrot it or tell somebody else, tell multiple people based off of what happened in my chambers is a problem. Mm -hmm. Is what he's saying. Is that breaking the law? Or is that just not being a loyal? I don't, again, I don't uh, really understand his basis. Employee. I don't really <laughs> understand. I mean, I understand and there's a world in which what happens in a chamber could be secret, but mm -hmm. not when it comes to, like, the, the thing about defendants, they are innocent until proven guilty. They have the right to a fair trial. They have, like, there are rights that are associated with that. Mm -hmm. And so when you are doing, that's why, discovery is so important, right? Like the state has to show the evidence that they are going to be using. You can't like stuff is it's so it's just weird that he's like doing the secretive thing. It just doesn't seem like there's a basis for it. Attorney Love mm -hmm. is saying that the reason the defense did not have a right to be there mm -hmm. is because this was a civil issue. OK, remember going back to even the civil contempt. Right. She is saying that this is a civil issue and had nothing really to do with the defendants. Mm. OK, that is her point. She's saying we had a witness and he was supposed to testify and he did not. And so us offering him immunity uh, has nothing like the immunity. part. It has nothing to do with the defendants. Mm -hmm. And so I've read a lot of things about this because this has been talked about obviously everywhere. And I came across um, this this case, this lawyer and a case that seems to possibly explain this part. OK, 
I forgot his name, the lawyer, but let's uh let's put it up. It's gonna just help me. Okay, so the case is uh Georgia versus King. Okay, King is the defendant, and so here it and so the case was appealed and taken to the sub Georgia Supreme Court. Okay, so this is the um order the the appeal this is the opinion after the, it was appealed mm -hmm. and so that first thing highlighted says king meaning the defendant contends that the trial court acted improperly by conducting a brief hearing outside of his presence concerning the state's request for an order compelling walter smith which is a witness mm -hmm. to testify in king's trial you following yep and confirming the use and derivative derivative use immunity so we're talking immunity mm -hmm. that would apply to that compelled testimony. OK, so you mm -hmm. see the similarities here, right? This is a the defendant and there is a hearing outside of his presence concerning this witness who yeah. was given immunity. A criminal defendant has the right. Actually, let me go to the next one. Oh, OK. A criminal defendant has the right to be present during all portions of his or her trial. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And a defendant's absence during a critical stage of those trial proceedings, absent a waiver of the defendant's right to be present, is not subject to harmless error analysis. Now, let's keep going. The hearing in question, however, appears not to have been a part of the proceedings against King. OK, mm -hmm. appears to be separate, a civil issue, not a part of the criminal. Mm -hmm. While King might have pre preferred that a key witness not be ordered to testify truthfully, while the defendant would hope, you know, it's not in his best interest to have somebody given immunity, there is nothing in Georgia law that would have permitted him to object to the state's request for the order or that would suggest that King's rights were the subject matter under consideration. On the contrary, the trial court was obliged to consider whether the tes testimony was necessary to the public interest, which is what the state said about um, Copeland, mm -hmm. a matter which King had no standing to address. Uh, King was King was placed on sufficient notice that Smith had been ordered to testify and that his testimony could not later be used against him. All right. Hmm. So what this what what the Georgia Supreme Court said okay. based off of this is that that hearing mm -hmm. was not the business of the defendants. Here's why this gets interesting, though, because that order, the way I read it and y'all know I'm not a lawyer. The way I read it is that a hearing regarding giving a witness immunity is not the business of them. Mm -hmm. What seems to have, have happened in YSL is that the ex parte meeting was about the if you don't testify, now you are in violation of the immunity and we're going to put you in jail. Mm. And that feels more on the coercion and the intimidation version versus just, hey, here's a meeting. We are going to give you immunity. Let's talk about what immunity means. We want your testimony, et cetera. Mm -hmm. That is, seems to be different than what is alleged to have happened in this meeting. And I'm going to fast forward just a little bit, which is um, there was a motion filed by Diamante Kendrick, whose also name is Yat Gotti. There was a motion filed for uh, the judge to be recused. And in that motion, Yat Gotti's attorney goes through what is alleged to have happened in the ex parte meeting. And so it says, let's go through it. Are you following? Is it making sense? My question is, does the defense not have the right to know what the meeting is about before the meeting happens? Like, well, I understand whether it's civil or, um, or if it's a part of the trial, but shouldn't they say, Hey, this is civil. And this is what we're asking him. Well, and we're that's what they're saying. We, and I, it's going to be in this, uh, okay. what we're going to say, but they were, they were not put on notice that a meeting saying. was even happening or that, yeah, that the meeting was even happening. And there's the defense is saying that's a problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So here are some snapshots of what the defense is saying they were told happened in this ex parte meeting. Number one, upon information and belief, Judge Glanville presented its sworn witness, meaning Kenneth Copeland, with a printout of the perjury statute and the first statement statute of the state of Georgia during the meeting. OK, that's number one. So, again, it is not a, it is not a meeting about, hey, we want to give you immunity. This is we're we're talking about coercion is what it sounds like. Uh Copeland stated to ADA Hilton, uh, who is one of the prosecutors, that if called to testify, he would simply lie on the stand. 
And then in response to that, ADA Hilton allegedly stated that she would not prosecute him for if he were to lie on the stand. Then Kenneth Copeland allegedly says that he's going to testify that he killed Donovan Thomas Jr. Again, which is key to this whole case. And the next bullet says that ADA Hilton said that if he testified that he killed uh, Donovan Thomas Jr., that she would prosecute him for perjury. Again, if he testified to that. The next one, uh, upon information and belief, Kenneth Copeland in this meeting announced that he would invoke uh, his Fifth Amendment rights and not testify uh, and that he stated that he would sit in jail for two years rather than testify. So he is like he is very adamant and in, in not wanting to testify. Mm. Um, and then it says that upon information and belief, Judge Glanville informed Kenneth Copeland that he could keep him. He could keep Kenneth Copeland incarcerated until additional defendants were tried, not just the six defendants currently on trial. And what this has to do with. Remember, the initial indictment had like 28 uh, defendants, a lot of them, not a lot. Some of them took plea deals. Mm -hmm. Some of them were severed. OK, mm -hmm. some of them were like not a part of this trial, but they're still going to have a trial. And so what he's saying is I can keep you in jail, not just to the end of this trial. I can keep you in there until every single co-defendant has their trial. Exactly. Uh, the next one is ADA Love or Hilton informed Kenneth Copeland that there were, again, over a dozen defendants left to try. These mm -hmm. are, again, the there was somebody earlier this year was just captured. He was on the run. I think it was PB Roscoe, actually, uh, which has to do with the Little Wayne shooting. So he, they are saying until even he, his is done, you will be in jail. Um, the next one, upon information and belief, following the above, above coercive actions by Chief Glanville uh, in conjunction with one or more attorneys from the Fulton County DA's office, Kenneth Copeland that stated that he was going to testify. So he went from, again, very adamantly at the beginning saying, I'm not testifying. I'm not testifying. I'm not testifying. And then at the end of this, getting on that stand and oh, doing yeah. some version of a testify, a testimony. testify after learning. That's what I'm saying to me. If they break it down, like you just did. To Does that guys, make sense? Yes. Then they will understand what they're working with. Period. He yeah. probably didn't know anything about the other cases of, on the other guys and having to sit in jail till they got uh, tried and prosecuted. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Okay, good. I hope that makes sense. I hope looking at that case. Um, and again, my point with showing that case, let me be very, very clear. My point with showing that case is not to defend the actions. That wasn't the point. What seem to be happening mm -hmm. is that just like Judge Glanville was confused about civil contempt and criminal contempt, he may be confused about this ex parte meeting happening mm -hmm. and the fact that the Supreme Court is saying a meeting about the actual immunity, like that part before the immunity, like mm -hmm. that part seems to be fine. But the way I'm reading the Georgia Supreme Court is that that's the only part that they are talking about is fine. They yeah. didn't say that this other meeting where it feels like coerce, uh, coercion happened is like fine. Like you intimidating that dude. Exactly. And it just seems like he didn't, he may be, it just seemed like Judge Glanville may not have all the facts straight. Okay. He didn't, he didn't got a few things messed up when it comes to the bond and the appeal, when it comes to civil contempt, criminal contempt, and maybe when it comes to this, he may be confused. Uh, okay. So that is mini mm. bar, sidebar. I'm not a lawyer. There's a lot of them, though, who are talking about this, obviously. So if you are consuming my content, which I appreciate, you should also pair it with somebody who actually works in the system and may be able to explain something that I uh, cannot. So there we go. That's it. I hope I that was helpful. you did a great job. With Thank that. you. Yeah. Thank you. Because I, I fully understand it now. Good. Also, yeah, Judge Glanville, he, had, he got an ego and he got a lot going on. So we're going to jump into Karen Reed. And um, your boy Proctor has taken over the show. Uh, Proctor and his boss, what's his name? Brunick, 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 Bruninick. Trial started with Bruchanic, um, basically confirming all of the other people's uh, testimonies, basically. So um, confirming he interviewed the Alberts. Uh huh. The McCabe's. Um, he also left Colin off of uh, reports. Reports. Yeah. Um, 
and it came down to oh all of the uh pieces of tail light they found mm -hmm. he's confirming that he's looking in bags they're giving him evidence and he's just really just yeah that happened this happened here's this here's that and that's how the testimony went um until they got to the sally port now the sally port situation is where they pulled in um what's her name karen's karen reads suv yep they pulled her uh car into the sally port garage basically and they were reviewing the video and interesting enough this video was inverted yes so everything that was on the right was supposed to be on the left and vice versa which is kind of weird to me but um that's what this video is going to show ready Did it appear that someone just seemed to appear Pause it for a second. toward the rear of the vehicle? So if you see at the so, bottom, I didn't... Due to the I triggering of the... this was inverted. I thought this was just a regular video. But if you look down at the bottom where you see the word police on the older vintage police vehicle, you see it's backwards. So it's inverted. Yeah. The, the camera is backwards but go ahead you, you want to put your headphones or no oh it's not really gonna say oh well he was talking okay. motion I asked you why i asked you if did it appear if someone had just appeared out of nowhere in the back of the vehicle? that's what the footage uh represents yes can we go ahead and play this closest to the camera you okay play. you can pause it all right, so now, for some reason, they also have the regular video of the camera not being inverted. Mm -hmm. You look down at the bottom, you see the police. Um, the word police is in the proper uh, manner. I, I'm not sure why the other video was inverted. I'm not even sure why they included it. Um, it's kind of weird to me when they have this for footage as well. Mm -hmm. But go ahead, you can play this. <laughs> the same footage. Keep playing. Pause it. All right, so you can stop it right here. All right, so looking at this video i'll keep it up yeah you can keep it up looking at this video they're explaining um well they're trying to figure out what the guy is doing in the back passenger side of the vehicle so and you all know that's where the tail light has been broken mm -hmm. so you can't see what's going on on the uh, on the other side of the vehicle but obviously people have been going back and forth over there doing something to right. that tail light yeah all right so you have these two videos as clear as day okay you can see everybody in there they're able to name the people that are in and out of the video you can read police on the car you see bikes you see the color of the vehicle you can see the color of the dummy right here now watch this next video of the camera that gets the footage on that side on the passenger side of the car watch how crappy this video is the person that was toward the back of the vehicle that you earlier on wednesday identified as trooper proctor moving toward <laughs> Sergeant, did you see the what was depicted on the video is that just ran from 507? That last video would have covered and shot everybody that was messing around with the tail light. Obviously, as you could see, well, you couldn't see. You couldn't see nothing. Mm -mm. Only 
little silhouettes of what was going on mm-hmm. there. Now, what the defense is, uh, uh, is about to be asking, I believe this is Brucanic because it's a B. <laughs> All right. Uh, they're asking him basically uh, what happened to the time stamp between a, a certain time slot. And that certain time slot is missing. But in that time slot, that's where everybody was working on this tail light. But for some reason, it's missing. It's missing. But wait, before you say that, I just have to say, imagine being a juror because what happened and why it was so good and why we love a- Action Jackson mm-hmm. is because on direct examination, uh, what's his name? Uh, and Lally. Oh, Lally. Lally plays the whole video mm-hmm. and is just asking questions as if the video is fine. It is not until <laughs> Action Jackson on cross oh, yeah. is like, Hey, 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 hey. Can you look at the word police right there? Does that look right to you? Also, look at the number four on that garage. Is that backwards to you? And then he's like, well, is it, is this accurate? And and Buchanan is like, it is accurate as in the things that happened, but it is mirrored. First, it is mirrored. Yeah. He's like, wait, when you was on direct, did you mention that this was mirrored? Mm-hmm. Did Lally ask you about it being mirrored? So, it, and then he literally says, if I didn't bring this up, our mm-hmm. jurors would be left to believe that this video is accurate. Yep. Nobody would have mentioned it being mirrored. And that man was up there like, I, I no, he didn't ask me, so I didn't say it. I don't, I don't know. You don't, you don't invert your stuff. Your stuff don't be invert. I invert stuff all the time. Brucanic's entire testimony is him not answering questions unless you ask him the specific. Well, all of them have been question. saying that. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah They're like, yep. I didn't mention it because they didn't ask me. Yep. But then when you understand, y'all shall be offering all the information. When Julie Albert, I think not Julie, uh, one of the, I can't remember her name. But when she was on the stand and he was asking her questions, she went on a whole tangent about how the family has been harassed for the last two years and how there's a it was McCabe, Mm -hmm. how there is a blogger and he harasses us. And how how come how come y'all got all the things to say except for Mm -hmm. when it has to do with calling? Yep. Except for when it has to do with this video being inverted. Except for I just it was mm-hmm. yeah Jim McCabe. It I explain to me how you can sit up in here and have an inverted video and just play it as if it's true. That is wild. But the, on the other hand, though, okay, it's inverted. So what? What it, do you mean? I'm saying it's I'm I'm trying to see what it proves other than you all aren't providing the obvious information to it you all aren't being truthful at all yes so i'm well that's given on this case ain't they ain't ain't nobody being truthful uh at all but the inverted video why is it why does it even exist why is this camera shooting it that way why was this even uh presented into evidence when you have the correct video yeah but was it the correct video for the same time yeah oh. if you if you replay well, it back it's the same it's time the same time the guy trips or slides yeah, in i remember the, front, the sliding of- what is yeah but uh, the state is i mean the the defense is are the ones who presented that one uh, the, the flip the corrected version the the defense presented that did they? Yeah, he said, because remember, remember when Proctor gets on the stand and he asks him, did you what video have you watched? And he was like, the one I saw was for fine. And he's like, yep. what? And he's uh-huh. like, and he was like, the defense are the ones who presented a video that was accurate to what actually happened. Uh. The Commonwealth was trying to get away with an inverted video, which is just insane. Just insane. So, yeah, the defense is fixing it. But it, again, I just we can move on. But if I was. If I was the juror, if I was a juror, mm-hmm. there's just no way that if you ain't gotten in a hide, you hide nothing. And then why would a video ever need to be invert? Why would a video ever need to be tampered with? Why would evidence ever need to be? If I say 
give me the video from your phone. Mm -hmm. You should download the video and then airdrop it. The fact that you would be in an editing app at all is questionable. Well, what are y'all doing? That's my question. But I, I think my you're, question you're is lying. to the to the prosecution. Like, what are you hiding, or what were you trying to prove by inverting the video? I they were trying to hide that who was over there by that tail light. But even in the regular video, you can't see it. Oh, it's still it's just when it's inverted, it's just you still can't see the passenger side. Now, when it comes to seeing the passenger side, that video that we just saw that's basically pitch black. Oh my gosh. I don't now, even know. That is like okay, it's how so are these distorted cameras filming the way they're filming, and this one is in the same room. Doing the same thing, and now all of a sudden it's black. I that video was really hard to watch the whole time. I was like, Why are y'all even playing this? And he Jackson was trying really hard to like, do you see you see how the person and I was like, No, I no, I, I, I and I don't even need glasses. I can't see. You can't see anything. this is dark. <laughs> I don't uh somebody is saying this, and I actually agree. I don't understand how it's not misconduct on the part of the Commonwealth. I'm at, I was actually oh, for like inverting the video for if they knew that video was inverted and still presented it that way. I I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know. But I was it it felt borderline tampering with evidence. it felt like it should have there should have been a conversation Somebody by Auntie Bev mm -hmm. about that video. But I mean, maybe it was oh video producer here. They had to tamper with it after they got the inverted version. Otherwise, they would have been able to get the Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't have been able to revert it if it hadn't been inverted. There wouldn't have been a version to go back to. You would uh. imagine if it if if it hadn't been tampered with initially. It's just crazy. Anyway, okay, we can keep going. Go ahead and play this. This is, uh, yeah. But differently. Is there any other video other than this one that would show the exact condition of that taillight as it pulled in to the driveway, and then to the south one? Or is this the only one? From that location? Correct. That is the video that... Um, captures that time frame. And that's also the video that captures that area of the car, correct? The right rear portion of the car. Correct. And that 42 minutes from when the car arrived until 5.50 in the evening, that portion is missing, correct? It's not missing, it's just not recorded. It's not there. <clears throat> and if you're So that portion he's talking about is the portion that um, that would show what happened at the uh, well that portion that would have shown what they were doing to the tail light, um, and it was missing for some reason. It's missing on top of being just in pitch black, which is wild to me. Uh, anyway, so as they were moving on through. The interrog interrogation, uh, their witnesses, uh, they got rid of Buchanan, him lying and all, and they brought up Sergeant Byros. Yes. If you play this, S Sergeant Byros uh, came out and <laughs> he ain't a part of the team. He, he didn't get the memo. He didn't get the memo. The only thing I got from his testimony sealed the deal for me. And then they got him off the stand. Go ahead and play it. Recall from where you're standing at the point of the garage was uh, what part of the vehicle was facing you? Was it the front of the vehicle, the back of the vehicle, the side of the vehicle? If not? I was looking at the left side of the vehicle. And at some point, did you make any observations of the right rear part of that Lexus SUV? I did. And what, if anything, did you observe uh, about that area of the vehicle? I saw that there was some damage to the right rear taillight. Um, to my best ability and, and recollection, that taillight was not completely damaged. It was cracked and there, a piece was missing, but not completely damaged. And then beyond the taillight area. Wait, how come he wasn't on the group chat? Because mm -hmm. 
everybody on that stand is, yeah, no, crack tail light, 45 pieces. We found it in the snow. Oh, my gosh. This is so crazy. Lock so her up. Damage. Lock her up. So that man damage. said, yeah, I was there. And was there any? No, it was a small little crack thing, but there, it wasn't 45 pieces mm -hmm. missing. I said, wait, why did the Commonwealth call him? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. They messed up. Why would also the order in which these witnesses okay the order in which the commonwealth are doing these witnesses i think i've even said this before because why did we have buchanick before proctor i mean we know why but why would we have buchanick before proctor proctor is the lead investigator or whatever they called it off a major office whatever they called the man but the fact that he's the one, Buchanick is the one who went through the sequence of events. Mm -hmm. He's the one, hey, here's how it happened. And then we went here and then we went to this house and then we put the clothes on a piece of construction paper or whatever. And then we went here and like he walked through that. When you already know Proctor, the lead investigator, yeah. the person who owns this whole process is the one who should have walked through that. Is the He should have been called before. Buchanick was called. And then you put this man on the stand who just literally, that tail light was fine. It was a little, little piece <laughs> of something. That tail light was uh, fine. And then you get Proctor up there. They yeah. are not even, the Commonwealth, I, I don't, he's I, not helping the case. I think the Commonwealth understands. He's like, man, this is, we helping some straight criminals out here trying to get off from this murder. Oh my goodness. Okay. Come on. He can't, that dude, Sally, ain't his name Sally? Lally. Lally. He can't believe he going to win I, at all. He knows he's not. There's no way. Especially after Proctor. I thought oh Higgins, gosh. I thought he, I yes. thought Higgins was a mess. No. But Proctor. Proctor got on that stand after all the Ooh. hoopla, the wait. We are waiting for him. Ooh. He gets on that stand. And gets and is he demolished the fact that you would know demolished. that you did i have questions all right should okay. i play this go so, ahead so uh who is that uh i don't know um sergeant nicholas Barrows, i believe i think that's who we just I think watched it's Barrows. Uh -huh. oh, Barrows. uh after that i mean that was it basically from him they was like all right man you don't mess us up you can go now so uh, the, the, uh, the, the the fence didn't even cross examine him yeah okay. that's how yeah. you know that's how you know because they said no she it was the woman little on the defense team she said no questions your honor <laughs> because the defense gave him that signal they that were like, witness helped them why hey, would she get up and say anything else they gave him that ear <laughs> signal was like hey you know what to do you know what to do playboy Okay. Uh, so then they brought brought Proctor up. Okay, and you all know Proctor is the Kaiser Sose of this hilarious case, and he's showed who. They, well, they show you who he really is. The Alberts have plenty of plenty connections, and they even know Proctor. But Proctor has been saying that he only knows Colin. Uh, Chris and um, Kevin. No, well, he didn't say Kevin at first, and he then never admitted, and that, then it comes out that it's yeah, Kevin. he never admitted that he knew Kevin Albert, and that's what this video is about. Then on July 19th, 2022, you and Kevin, Kevin Albert have been out drinking together. In fact, the two of you got so drunk that Kevin Albert left his badge in your cruiser. And couldn't find his gun the next morning, right? Jackson. Overall. I can't speak to any level of intoxication, but uh, I don't recall any of us, either of us being uh, intoxicated. Got it. So isn't it true that at 7 on 720, July 20th, 2022, the day after at 839 in the morning, you texted Kevin Albert, Quote, found your badge in my cruiser this morning. End quote, correct? Yes. Then you texted him, I can leave it in my locker at the gym, drop it off at your station, or leave it in my mailbox. <clears throat> correct? Correct. Kevin Albert responds, my mailbox. Did I take my gun 
and then included a wince face, correct? Correct. So the fact of the matter is, you two got so drunk and had to ask you the next morning where his gun was. His badge in your cruiser after a night of drinking. Isn't that right? Yes. Which means you were drinking and driving in your cruiser. The amount of people in this case who are members of law enforcement and drink and drive is insane. That all is of wild. them. Every they they were drinking all day. And then he th this is correct they need to be arrested these are terrible cops they're not even just they're ter like you guys are supposed to be protecting protect and serve the community y'all are the ones drunk driving these were two your law enforcement vehicle your car police your police car yes they were drinking and driving oh in their car in their police vehicle so much so that kevin albert brother of brian albert kicking it with proctor you know proctor knows the rest of the family Absolutely, i don't even know does. why he acting like he doesn't kevin kevin lost his badge and his gun and his gun how how does this happen how do you spend 17 plus years on the force and and you're doing this but it well I, well i guess if you know everybody you get away with it mm -hmm. but these guys were straight up open drinking drunk in the cruiser it which is wild crazy proctor uh was doing um he was texting his family friends co-workers throughout this whole um investigation and he was texting about karen reed the entire time uh calling her all type of names um i mean just shitting on her character period the entire time and this video here is a sum of everything he basically said about her during this investigation my emotions got the best of me with that figure of speech well, let's talk about your figures of speech during the course of your investigation you can follow your figures of speech there's about to be it might be triggered or might trigger some people but it's about to be a lot of cussing Oh yeah. A lot this, of cover cover your ears. Get the children out the room. Include the following. She's a bitch. Objection. Is that right? Yes. A whack job, correct? Yes. A retard, right? Yes. Her balloon knot leaks, right? Yes. No ass, correct? Yes. She's fucked, according to you, right? Yes. Ass leaker. That was the word you used, a figure oh, of speech, right? Gosh. Correct. A girl who shits herself. Oh right? my God. Correct. And then fuck her, correct? Correct. Would you agree, Trooper Proctor, that you have dehumanized Karen Reed during the course of your investigation with comments and words like this? Jackson. I'll give you this one, Mr. Jackson. Would you agree with that? I'd say based off that language, um, yes. And you admitted in your own words that the cop homeowner wasn't going to quote, catch any shit, right? Correct. Because you were out to moat to quote, make this cut and dry. Isn't that right? The homeowner was going to catch any shit because Mr. Albert had nothing to do with Mr. O'Keefe's death. Because you were going to make sure that the case was cut and dry. Those were your words, right? Jackson. Sustain. And Trooper Proctor, it would be far easier, far easier for you to pin it on the girl who's just a whack job cunt, oh in my. your words, who you hope just kills herself, right? Jackson. Sustain. Shame on you, sir. Get it. Jackie. All right. So jurors disregard. <laughs> right. Case closed, man. There are so many things wrong. First of all, there's so many things. First of all, you are the lead investigator of this case. 
I can only imagine, right? I say reckless things. We have a group chat. You say funny stuff. I get that. Mm -hmm. But as a person, you are still using the R word. You are calling people that in 2024. Mm -hmm. You're just a bad person. Why are you the... Like, I don't ever want any of my text messages read in court. I just feel like I would cringe too. But for those to be his text messages are bad. Like, they're bad. So the R word. Okay. But then you, she has a medical condition mm -hmm. and you're calling her leaky butt? Leaky butt. Why would you be doing that? Here, a balloon. I didn't even know what a balloon knot was. Okay, first of all, I didn't even, what is that? What kind? Of, you know, who, a balloon what? knot. It looks like a booty. It looks like an anus. I well, I if know now. Knot, I but oh, yeah, I didn't yeah. know. Okay. I was like, what are you even saying? Like, what are is this the slang that's happening in, I in didn't the know that either. Canton police yeah. community? Is this or boss? Is this what y'all are so, saying? <laughs> and then you're communicating to your friends like this kind of language about uh, this woman asking about her nudes and everything else. Like, what is wrong with you as a person? And then his little face, he's going to try to put his head down like, oh, so I was terrible. So um, that's not a reflection of who I am. You yes. know, don't try to play, sir. Don't try to play now. So for the people that don't know, Proctor, uh, the guy getting towed up, he texted all everything that the lawyer just summed up. He texts this throughout the investigation to his friends and family numerous of times he just didn't do one big text and say oh i'm sorry I, I didn't mean to do that no he said you're this you're that like two weeks later she's this she's that she's going to jail she's this she's that this man meant every bit of what he said of what he said don't try to front now yeah and he wasn't sorry oh my gosh man, no the guy is you're sorry ah. you got caught. You didn't sorry. You're not sorry yes. for what you did and what you said. And again, again, because the whole point of this is presentation to a jury as a jury. OK. And to the point that you made. Uh, Jackson mm -hmm. says, basically, you decided early on that she did this, that yep. Karen Reed is the person who did this. So if that is what is being said. And am I supposed to make this? If that is what is being said, and now you are able to present these text messages of him saying these terrible things about this woman who's presumed to be innocent, mm -hmm. but you have done no investigation and you are calling her all types of names to your friend group and the other questionable text messages as well about um, the the owners of the house. He's a cop. He's not going to get, it's no problem for him. Yep. Like you're saying all of this stuff, like this is crazy. I just can't believe hundred percent. Keep that same energy. You have big energy in them text messages, calling her all types of names. Keep that same energy. You yeah. ain't got on that stand. That man looked like a child and it didn't help because action Jackson, his mic drop moment. Wow. He going to say shame on you. Shame on you. As he closes Sir, his notebook. Shame that was, these people are putting a clinic on. They are putting on a clinic. Okay, this is Action Jackson also cuss with the with oh my god all the effort in the world. He he be like, oh my gosh, Fuck. this is my time to shine. You call bitch. her a bitch. I mean, he be oh, in it. That's he be in it in it. Bang also, bang. Also with these officers. If I was an officer, I would have a throwaway phone. Oh my gosh, where's I your burner? I would not be on my work phone where's or my burner? personal phone texting this outrageous stuff to other people. At any given time, man, something can happen and your phone can be confiscated. Literally. And this is what y'all do. And that's what I don't understand. Y'all deal with criminals all day. Y'all take people's phones all day and use it as evidence. Where's your burner? Are you learning nothing from what you're doing? Do you learn nothing from your actual profession? Learn, get a burner, cop. Something. I don't understand. Somebody is, was saying get a landline. Get something because this ain't it. Your phone, it's the text messages to bring are going to come in. The chirp phones back so y'all can just chirp. Something, a walkie talkie. My goodness. Morris Code. This do guy, something. Proctor's wife. Anybody that knows Proctor is embarrassed 
for this man. Oh, absolutely. And, he's in bed. He, his kids are in bed. His oh my wife gosh. is in. She might divorce this man after this. No, she in on it too. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm being way too free with my opinions about this case. I'm telling you, I usually try to reserve it, but this is wild. That man okay. saying that about her, and he is investigating this. There's it's bias. It's oh, showing yeah. bias. It's showing that you don't like her. You've decided that's who it is, and you are going to do conduct a quote unquote investigation that only matches what you are already saying happened. Mm -hmm. You're not neutral. You don't already. You know how you are making this invest investigation match what you needed to be. There's a lot of stuff that we didn't mention. Uh, Proctor didn't interview certain people. He didn't interview certain people Damn, for uh, for a long period of time. He testified that no plow uh, plowed the street that night when we all know it did happen. Yes. Uh, he didn't. He didn't confiscate anybody else's phone. Oh he didn't gosh. look for any more records from anybody. And we saw what happened with Higgins. He Higgins had, did his own download. Yeah. Confirmation bias. Man. That's what it's called. Yes. What I was trying to say. Confirmation bias. Go Proctor ahead, had his man already. It was a closed case for Proctor already. So yeah. uh, that's what I got. I, uh, yeah. Yeah. If y'all haven't seen him testify. Go and look at day 22 when he testifies. This man, and they have him reread all the text that he said. And it's, it's that's hilarious. why it's that's why it's hilarious. It's like when you get in, your, in trouble and your mom make you read what you say or what, what did you say? And you got to like now you're embarrassed. It's not fun no more. Yeah. It's not fun when you have to do it in front of a jury and a, in a courtroom. With that being said, I'm going to give my last shame on you scenario of what could have happened if Karen and the Alberts did not um, unalive John. The neighbors, if y'all remember, one of the um, Lank, either it was Lank or one of the officers were like the neighbors, the Asian neighbors, mm -hmm. almost if they have an issue with other people or if they have issues with their neighbor. What if Karen dropped off John at the wrong house. He shows up to the agent's house drunk mm -hmm. and they beat him up. And the agents, they had a dog as well. They beat him up and what? left him there. They all knew. They, they testified that they saw her car pull up. And then the other brother was there too. Who? The, uh, what you talking about? Uh, not Nigel, Julie Nagel's brother. What I'm saying is, what if Karen dropped him off? Well, she could have dropped him off at the right house. Let's say John walked to the wrong house because he was drunk. Is that not a scenario? No, they uh, okay. What I'm saying, no one <laughs> says he walked in the home. That's true, but what I'm saying is, she was outside of that house. She was, and but we he could have walked to the neighbor's house. That big old of, lawn. She, I mean, okay. I'm just trying to. Yeah, say, yeah, you know, okay. That's why I said okay. You got to think about these things. That could have happened. Correct. And then, uh, the neighbors could have been, uh, over it because they could have been harassed. You never know. I'm like, ah, oh, they back over here. I think that's a stretch, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying. I'm trying to. You know, because we are being biased in this situation. I'm biased. Get... I'm owning the bias. Yeah. Because this is absolutely, this is a cover-up. This is a cover-up. All right. We could done. Y'all think that could have happened? Oh, the yeah. Neighbors. Weigh in if you feel like... <laughs> she said no, Greg. <laughs> weigh in if you think Greg's theory is accurate. You know what? Also, though, uh... weigh in because the whole thing... I'm going to quickly go back to YSL. The whole thing about YSL is trying to figure out what, who the source is. That's what the judge wants to know. He has no right to know. But And people are saying it could have been Kenneth Copeland that told Young Thug. And then Thug told... Uh, Brian Steele, people are saying maybe it was uh, Kayla, the attorney, the stand-in attorney, maybe she is the one who told a theory that I could entertain mm -hmm. is that what if Kayla, the stand-in attorney, it seems like she she's new to the chaos of YSL, right? Because it's not even her case. What if she told Melnick, who's on vacation and Melnick called Steele and told him 
that could be an option that I feel like hasn't been explored. Regardless, weigh in in the comments on Greg's theory, weigh in in the comments on who you think told uh, the defense about this meeting. That's all. That's it. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us for another episode of The Debrief. Uh, follow me on everything. I'm not a lawyer, but subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel. Um, and what you guys say? You can catch me on IG, G double O L Z B Y, Building with Goose on YouTube, and um, let us tell it on YouTube. Until next time. Oh, join the Patreon. I'd be forgetting to say that. Join the Patreon. I'm not a lawyer, but uh, on Patreon, join us. We have a good time. We've been doing some lives recently. I put all the documents in there as well. They get me. Yes. Join the Patreon. Uh, we filmed this live with them as well. So tap in if you want to be a member of the jury. That's what we're calling ourselves sometimes. Uh, tap in. All right. Thank you. Bye.